What's happening, people? Welcome back to Out of the Loop. So today we are going to look at track evolution. Uh, so it's just the idea of evolving your track over time rather than it sounding like it's just in the same loop all the time. So I've got this track that I have been working on over the last few days and it evolves slightly through the track um, until like a final climax where it changes quite a bit. And so I thought this would be a good way or a good example to show you this kind of evolution. Um, so yeah, let's start by going through each of the sections. So we've got like the first drop. And that's kind of where the track all started. So the first loop, which I was working out of, and then I evolved the track over time. So the way that I arrange my music or I start my projects is I will work within a loop, maybe like a 16 bar loop rather than an eight bar loop. So it gives me some um, more space to kind of add more things. And then I will get like the main, main theme down. So where I'm feeling good about it and I'm like, okay, I need to feel like the track's moving a little bit now. So then I start arranging it out. And then what I will do is I'll come to a point where I'm like, okay, I've, I've got the first drop down and I'll need to do the second drop or maybe like a drop 2.0, something like that. And then I'll start adding more things in like drums, maybe evolve the lead or whatever it is. And then I'll keep doing that. So I'll come to like the bridge maybe, and then the bridge, I might need to add some stuff, some little textures or whatever. And then I'll come to the last drop and then I'll feel like I really need to add something then I start adding quite a few different things or I change things around quite a lot. So what I'm, my point and the reason why I'm telling you this is try not to get stuck within your, okay, I've done my eight bar loop. This is everything I need for the track because you're, you're, you're kind of like run out of options there. I think it's good to be bearing in mind when you've got your loop. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to evolve from this. I'm going to do more, but this is a good starting point. Yeah, that's my rant over. Let's uh, have a listen to what we've got. So this is the first uh, loop or first drop. Okay, cool. So what we have in there is the main theme, which is the chords. Essentially, they are like the star of this track. Um, and then we've got quite a few drums in there. It's quite busy, but it's not too high in energy. You're going to see as it, as it evolves, uh, there's going to be a lot more energy in terms of the drums. Uh, but there is a little bit of evolution within this first drop. It's just that the strong clap comes in here. And then I think I add these little, this rolling perk, which is just this kind of, what is it? Let me, there it is. Yeah, it's a, like a little tap, something like that. It just gives a little bit of energy, essentially. It's like adding a shaker, but it's just uh, with a perk. So yeah, that's the things that come in. The main shakers that are playing through the majority of the track, at this point, the velocity is a little bit lower. So uh, they, they, they're there, but they're a little bit softer. And then as we move along, you're going to see that they're a little bit higher in velocity. So let's move to the first drop. And uh, you'll hear that there's a, a bit of a difference within the track. <laughs> Okay, so, oh yeah, I just missed the, the little additional melody there. Um, but the things that have been added there is we've got a lot more higher drum energy. It's essentially the same drums as before, but because they're all coming in at the same time, rather than slowly coming in, there's a lot more impact there. Um, and then also I've evolved this, I believe. Maybe I added a few little perks in here and there. So just making the perks feel like they've got a little bit more energy. And then, yeah, these shakers now, the velocity is at 95 before it was at 64. Very small change, um, but it, it makes a big difference, essentially. And I think the oh, also the other thing is that the bass has now come in. So we've got this now really nice low 
uh, low information that's come in and it's like giving the track a sense that it's really, really moving along. Um, the saxophone and stuff like that isn't really evolving. It's kind of the same thing. The one thing to bear in mind is that I'm with this saxophone because it's such a nice thing doing the track. I'm trying not to overuse it too much early on in the track because I know that I'm going to want to use it a lot more later on <laughs> without you getting bored of it. Because I've only got a small sample, so I, I don't have much to work with. It's kind of like if you get a vocal sample and it's like, oh, I've only got this small bit. You really have to try and use it sparingly throughout the track to, to make it last. So that's what I've done here. I've got these little little stabs. But not like a, not the full sample yet. Um, the, yeah, the additional thing. So the main theme. So I said this could be anything, right? This could be your pluck or something like that. Your arpeggiator. Now, within this main theme or the main melody, I've added a, some additional notes. So I've got this little bit here. You're not going to know the difference because I didn't show you the progression before, but this is a little bit different, this uh, B, 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 G, C. So we'll have a little listen to that and so you see what I mean. <laughs> So before that wasn't there. The chords were a lot more simple. There was less little notes in there. And then with, so if I look here, sorry, it's probably a better way if I do it like this. So if we look at the progression here, it's a little bit more simple. There's less top notes. And then we'll look here. Yeah, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more like shorter notes in there, which is really helping the groove. Uh, sorry, I can't unfreeze it because it's my CPU is just going crazy. Uh, I'm using the Noir through Native Instruments and it's an absolute beast. Uh, so yeah, let's move through the track a little bit. So I've got this other little drop. I did like a little mini drop within this section and it's just adding a bit more um, strings and the saxophone is doing a bit more work. I did some chops with the saxophone. So this is what I mean. I was trying to get more out of the sample. So what I did is I took the sample, the, the saxophone sample, loaded it into a simpler and then I put splice uh, slice mode on and poly mode on so I could play a few different things at the same time. And so then I played these kind of stabs with, with the sax. So it's this kind of... Just like really nice information there, just like stacking on top of each other. And it's just a way of kind of having the sax play but not fully playing the sample. And so that's what comes in here. And I think that might be the only other real change. Maybe the drums evolve. Oh yeah. So now with the drums, I started adding more high energy. So I've added like a tambourine here. And then I've also added some bongos and some little perks. So these, all these three, let's have a little listen to them. And they sound a little bit like sloppy on their own, but in, in uh, context, they all work with the groove. So it's adding quite a lot of energy there. So they're the real change to the track and the, the sense that the track is evolving is because the drums are adding quite a bit of energy there. So let's have a listen to this little mini break. Oh, and I added this as well. This is like a vocal atlas. these additional strings as well so it's just the uh, you know adding a bit more emotion to the track essentially at this point and they're just strings that are being held on single notes that are playing nicely with the chords it's just like the root note and possibly like the fifth or something like that um so yeah that's it so you can feel that there's a bit more energy here i'll just do a little before and after so you see what i mean so we've got the first drop and then the chorus got that tambourine in there the the drums have a lot more just high energy we've got the sax which is playing within the groove now before it wasn't really playing when everything else was playing it was just kind of like this atmospheric bridge thing but now it's playing like to complement the groove cool let's move to the last section so this is a little bit where i'm still working on this this is a track that you know i've only been doing it the last two days and um, so i 
I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this bit in because it's a little bit, yeah, I don't know, different. Um, but I'm going to show you, and this is something that I just try to do to push myself. I'll try and really like evolve the track and change something quite a bit. And it's just going to be a way that I can like, I, I think I kind of learn from it. And sometimes I get some really, really good results. So yeah, I would advise that you do this. So let's just look at the piano as that's the main thing that changes here. So as we come into the bridge out of this section, the piano comes in and it's just like kind of solo piano. So as the piano is being soloed really, and it's like the main center of attention, I just did a little change with the, with the top melody. So I just did this little walking down thing, just did whatever felt right essentially. And uh, yeah, so it's just giving the, 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 the piano or the chords a sense that they're changing a little bit, otherwise it would get a little bit boring because they are played for the majority of the track. So let's have a little listen. Okay, and just before we get to this next bit, so what I've done is I've changed the rhythm of the piano. I just solo it here. Oh, here. This is what's coming in uh, later on. So in this main drop, that kind of duh, 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 so it's a lot more aggressive. And so I needed a way to make that smoother uh, rather than it just starting straight away. So I started implementing it into these slower chords. So that's what you're going to hear here. And then with the bass, I actually brought it in a little bit early here with that same pattern. So this up oh, here. So the right, the bass before was just playing this. So just sustained notes and now it's playing uh, rhythmical notes. I'm going to show you the, the pattern and stuff like that, but I just wanted to let you know that that's what I'm doing to prepare the listener for that change so it's not so sudden and, and, and drastic so let's uh let's have a little listen so it's just this dun 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 So yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm fully committed to this idea here, but I do like the change. And uh, I think if I just perfect it a little bit more, it will it will sit really nicely. And so I, I think this is like the something that I typically do. I do this a lot in my music and the music that's been released. And I, I think it does get good results when I try and do this. So I would highly recommend that you do that. Just, just try and just like separate a bit of the track. Maybe you've got like a nice part of the track done, the majority of it's done, but just continue on a little bit further and just try and push yourself a little bit more and go, okay, I've got this main idea. Maybe if I just change it a little bit here, will it work? But what you need to do is you do need to have the other things in the track work around that. So I've got the bass that's following that pattern. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it in this case, because there's not too much going on, but just making sure that you, you've got, if you're going to do like a change in the drums and stuff like that, you need all the drums to have that same feel. So yeah, I'll just show you the actual notes uh, as they are, as they've, as they've evolved and changed. So we've got this progression here, which is like the main normal progression. It has moved on a little bit throughout the track, but it's the, the main slow progression that's going on. And then as it gets to this section here, it changes quite a bit. It, uh, it's still playing the same chords, the same fundamental chords. So the E and the A is still being played, 
but I'm just changing the pattern, just changing the rhythm of it a little bit, and it just gives it a feel like it's it's changed essentially. Nothing overly complicated. It's just trying to do something new with the rhythm essentially, and then the bass is just doing the same thing. So the bass is just following that the bottom note within the progression, rather than the uh, the other notes. It's just playing the the same bass line essentially, but just with a, a different pattern there. So yeah, just thought I would show that. Cool. Thank you very much, guys, for watching the video. I'll try and upload more, but I've been really busy with the PML stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'll try and upload more than uh, once every two, three weeks. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments. If you want to see some stuff within this track, uh, let me know as well, and I'll try and cover it. And yeah, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification button as well so you don't miss out on any more of my content. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.